Good morning. Good morning. May we silence all cell phone and electronic devices, please. My name is Lidora Nicholas. I'll be the moderator for this morning's class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, in the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. This Tampa branch was established in 1996. Excuse me, at this time I'd like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, President Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the truth, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by God, Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are laws many, God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. Unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus' is name is but is an erroneous name, a minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that can produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither were there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such name as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word of Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without, without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name <clears throat> and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, showed him the tabernacle pattern and a vision. 
Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of most holy place, holy place, court, round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the power of leading in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. <coughs> Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We have, de <coughs> excuse me, we have prayer dedicated in prayer by Dr. Carol Miller, music selection, Tampa Choir, scripture lesson, Romans the ninth chapter, will be read by Dr. Jennifer Marshall. Our scripture readers are Dr. Jennifer Marshall and Dr. Sherry Williams. <clears throat> Good morning. Let's bow our hearts and minds. Thank Yahshua for allowing us to come in here once again and sit down and take a seat and to hear, you know, the truth, the real truth. Um, our, our prayer really to him is that we don't falter or fall away from this gospel, that he allows us to stay here. And um, that, that should be our most important focus. And we just, with that, I'm just going to say hallelujah. Let's hope that we always have a seat in here and our, you know, and our minds don't sway away from what's really important. And from the truth, with that, I'm going to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Romans, the ninth chapter. I say the truth in the Messiah. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were accursed from the Messiah for my brethren, 
my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of Yahweh, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, the Messiah came, who is over all blessed forever. Not as though the word of Yahweh hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel, neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of Yahweh, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Yahweh according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? By no means, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and will, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, and that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against Yahweh? Shall the thing form say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay, and of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? What if Yahweh, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessel of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the nations, of which he spake through Hosea, saying, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living Elohim. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will Yahweh make upon the earth. And as, I, and as Isaiah said before, except Yahweh Sabbath hath left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and had been like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then, that the nations which followed not after righteousness have attained no righteousness, even the righteous which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, yet whosoever believeth on him shall not be disappointed. Romans, the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. In class. <laughs> we will have a three speaker format, and if you have any questions, please hold them to after class and approach the speakers, and they will be answered. Our first speaker for this morning will be Dr. Cynthia Smith. <clears throat>
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning. As always, it's great to be here. I don't know what's going to happen, but Yasha's going to, whatever Yasha wants to come out, that's what's going to come out. Because I have nothing really on my mind, per se, but, um... just thinking about the concerns of the brethren. I am concerned for us all and the things that I see and the things that we do, it concerns me. And, and I'm talking about the things after the flesh. I'm not talking about something spiritual. Because from a spiritual standpoint, we are on one accord. But see, it's that physical that's giving us problems, that's causing us to pause, causing us to distrust one another. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's what I'm concerned about. And, okay, this is what Yashua wants me to say. And if anyone takes offense to it, I'm sorry. But you have to take it up with the one that's doing the talking. Not with me. You know, we are, understand that we are at the end. We are on borrowed time. As it were, we have one foot on the banana peel and how, how does that saying go? And the other in the day of eternity. Right. One on a banana peel and one step in eternity. Exactly. We are just that close. We are just that close. And we can't let things of the flesh get in our way. We cannot do that. We have been in this class long enough. And Miss Nancy hasn't been here that long, right? But guess what? We understand that Yahweh has the ability to speed up her understanding. She can get something that it took us years and years to get. But my point is, is that we've been here too long. We have labored too long to let the flesh get in the way. And see, we always talk about the other camp. But look at yourself. Look at yourself. Look at your actions. Are you being beneficial to this class? And I'm not talking about this physical room. I'm talking about to the body of this class. We say we're the body of Yahshua the Messiah, but we don't always act like it. We don't. But are we being beneficial? Or are you just creating something just because you want to get some recognition? See, we understand it's not about that. Yahshua doesn't care about how much knowledge you have. He gave it to you. He knows how much you have already. Guess what? You don't have to flex it for my ability. Because I don't care. All I care about that you share what Yahshua has shared with you. That's all I care about. But still, this is a classroom. And see, Dr. Kelly set up these classes for a reason, right? For us to come together. For the Yahshuans to come together. But see, we don't always act that way. And what brought my mind to all of this is that like I said, I just see things that's going on. And if somebody don't say anything, then where is the love in that? We all have to do better, including myself, because there's things that I don't see. There's things that other people bring to my attention. It's like, oh, I need to do better. But I'm not going to sabotage someone for just, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to sabotage someone. 
just because I can do it. See, then that makes us no better than the people out there in the world. We have to be... The thing, what did I write? I wrote something down here. Last, um, when Dr. Dennis Allen was here, well, no, actually, it was the Wednesday before that, when this is when Peg and Rick was here. And I don't know which of them said it, but it said, the spirit of Yahweh causes unity. Not, not dissension. See, that spirit of mis that mystery of iniquity causes all of that. I don't care what you do after the flesh. I really don't. It's about the spirit. And see, when we come in here, that's what we want. You have a problem, take it up with Yahshua. I'm not your psychologist. You understand what I'm saying? That don't mean that we can't talk to each other. We talk to each other. Because I talk to Janet, I get a better understanding of something that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Something I didn't think about. But at the same time, come on. What are we doing? What are we doing? And I said we because I'm putting myself in that too. What are we doing? Are we letting the flesh get in the way? President, that's just a title. That's not who I am. It's just a title for this classroom sake purpose, right? There's no glory in that, is there? No. I'm not finding any glory in it. You understand what I'm saying? I don't get the red carpet rolled out. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's just a... And... Um... One of the scriptures we got recently. Who has bewitched you that you obey not the truth? Right? Who has done that? Who has? That we're not obeying the truth. And we understand that the truth is Yahshua and Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. what the <sighs> My whole thing is that if we say something, you better act on it. Don't say that Yahweh is in control of everything and then say, oh, but this. Or, oh, but that. If Yahweh is in control of everything, then let him be in control. Let him be in control. And some of you may not want to hear this, but I don't care. I don't care. Because you know what? Sometimes it's necessary. Right? Sometimes it is necessary because how many times do we say that this is very serious? I'm telling you, that's the one thing that's going to get us is the flesh. That's right. You want your accolades. Well, guess what? You don't get no accolades in this classroom. Because Dr. Kelly said, Make me prove it. What? Until you're satisfied. He didn't say, believe me, after all, Yahweh got into my body and... He didn't say that. He said, whatever I say to you, don't believe me, right? Mm -hmm. He said, you go out and you prove it for yourself. So guess what? If the red copper wasn't rolled out for him... It's not going to be rolled out for you. Right? I'm talking about putting everything in perspective. Where he, who that was, or is, and where, who you are, or is. You understand what I'm saying? Putting it into perspective. Yahweh doesn't care about any of that. He doesn't. And this is my message to you. And like I said, if you don't like it, I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not going to walk on eggshells. Yahshua called me up here, and this is what he wants me to say. Mm -hmm. 
We have to do better. We have to be better. Exactly. Because the thing about it is, we're down at the end. You're going to be here all this time, and then at the end, lose your soul. See, we understand that mystery of iniquity is subtle, right? Mm -hmm. Very subtle. So what makes you think that he's not still messing with you? What makes you think that? We know that Yahshua has the hedge around us, but guess what? He just lifts it up a little bit, lifts it up, put it down, lifts it up, lift it up, put it down, right? We can understand that. And so we better be careful of the things that we do and say. And, but see, one of the things that Dr. Kinley said right before he took off the flesh was what? Love the brother. Now, are you doing that? That's what you have to ask yourself. Are you doing that? I can't answer that for you. You have to answer that for yourself because you know whether you're doing it or not, right? It has nothing to do with me. But we all know what we're doing. We all know what we're doing. And guess what? Don't get your ass put in the lake because you want honor of men. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's not what it's about. And that's not what this class was set up for. And guess what? We do have a dean in this class. Yes, we do. And he was chosen for a reason. And if you don't like it, so be it. You don't have to like it from a physical standpoint. Doesn't Nobody's perfect, right? Yahshua is the only perfect one. But we do have it set up. And that position deserves respect. Whether you think so or not, it does. And this classroom deserves respect. Because this classroom was set up. 1996. He didn't just go out and set it up. He was sent to be. To, yes, he, we, you, under, you, understand you understand what I'm saying? Because right. we always talk about how the preachers, they go out. But we know that Yahweh sends his people, right? Mm -hmm. It's all been set up for a reason. And this is. Just what's been on my mind. So, you know what? You may want to cut this part out. That's fine with me. But I'm just saying what Yashua has given to me to say. And that's all I can do. Mm -hmm. But we have to do better. We have to do better. And don't undermine each other. I see it. I see it. And you know what? It's not good. It's not good. And with that, I'm going to say hallelujah and thank you for the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker for this morning class will be Dr. Tara Burley. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. <sighs> it's been a while since I've been up. <laughs> um, uh, it is a, definitely a um, blessing to be standing before you and to have anything 
to say about our Heavenly Father Yahweh and His purpose. Um, sometimes we need some things to be said that are, um, Yahweh knows how to get your attention. And, you know, while being in this class, I realized that Yahweh, first of all, is, he's not like what the church will consider, you know, a genie God or something that you can just wish for and boom, it'll happen just like that. Everything goes according to Yahweh's purpose and according to his will. And sometimes you can ask for things that is not according to Yahweh's will. Right. And sometimes Yahweh will give you what you ask for. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you have to, the, what's that scripture? Um, I was reading the transcript, Dr. <coughs> Kinley, the 21 hour prayer. <coughs> give me that scripture where it's talking about um, us praying a prayer. We don't know how to pray. Well, we know. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not good at remembering scriptures. Yep. Sorry. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 26. Mm hmm. 20. Yeah, I was gonna pick it up. Yeah, Yeah, Romans eight and twenty. Twenty, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not mm -hmm. willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, into the glorious liberty of the children of. Elohim. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Mm -hmm. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. We groan within ourselves that we be delivered from all of these physical things that, that keep us away from Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And that is that is the bondage that we are in now. Just this whole physical world is, is it opposes Yahweh. And even though we are in the world, we are not supposed to be of the world. Continue reading. 23. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption, redemption of our body. To get rid of these old bodies and this carnal mind, we are we supposed to wait on Yahweh. Keep reading. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? It, it says that we are saved by hope. That we are not saved by us doing things. Like what she was talking about, what Cynthia was talking about. It's not about us all these accolades and it's not about us trying to get the most money or it's not about us trying to get the highest position in our jobs and stuff and Yahweh showed me that <laughs> that um he will take it away from you as much as as you think you are something of yourself Yahweh will bring you so low to the point you have no other choice but to cry out to Yahweh because that's the whole purpose that you know, it's a it's a round trip, you know, it is a round trip. And we have to constantly be reminded of that, that Yahweh is the one who put us down here in this bondage in the first place, just like he did the children of Israel. And so he, he put them down there in that bondage. And what did they have to do? They had to cry out to Yahweh. They couldn't cry out to Baal. They couldn't cry out to Jesus, to Lord God. Yahweh was the only one that was able to get them out of Egypt. And that's even here still today with ourselves. 
Yahweh is the only one that is able to get us out of our condition and our state. And we need to keep that in mind. We have to constantly be reminded of that. There's no other L, there's no other God. That, like she, in the moderation, there's no other name given among men where we, we must be saved. Save in the name of Yahshua Messiah. They had to call on that name of Yahweh down here in Egypt in order to be delivered. Without calling on that name of Yahweh, you're doomed. No matter how you put it, no matter what, you are stuck. Like, sorry, Chuck, stuck like Chuck. <laughs> That's what we used to say. <laughs> you are stuck like Chuck. You can't do nothing without that name. <laughs> That's just the way it is. And Yahweh wants us to know that his name is so important and that we are down here to declare Yahweh's name. We are, that's the purpose of us being down here. To the rest of the world, we have to declare that name. And it is a big responsibility. I'm understanding now. It is a big responsibility for you to know this gospel and know the name of the creator and take it in vain and not use his name, not glorify his name. Yahweh, it says in scripture, Yahweh will not hold you guiltless. That you would not. Let's hold your finger right there. Let's get that scripture because I don't want to misquote it. But we, like she said, we are down here at the end of the age and this is not playtime. We can't play. We can't take this lightly we can't take this as a joke because Yahweh is not he will not hold you guiltless and it says it I think it's oh, I just read that is it Romans no Um, I need my phone. Exodus 20 and 7. Yahweh Seven. will not hold him guiltless. Pick it up. His name the, uh, I have to get it. I just found that. <laughs> if somebody else can okay. get it. Okay. Exodus 12 and 7. 20 and 7. Uh, 20. 20 and what did I say? Exodus 12. 20 and 7. 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy eloquent in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And we know that vain means worthless, useless. You cannot take Yahweh's name and make it worthless, make it useless. So we come down here and we know this name. Some people, they'll come and say, oh, I know the name, I'm fine. You know, I know the name is Yahweh. I know it's Elham, I know it's Joshua, and just walk out of class. But what are you doing with that name? Are you glorifying that name? Are you testifying unto Yahweh? It's not just a, about us knowing that name. It's more than that. We have, like, these carnal ordinances was done away with when Yahshua the Messiah got on the cross. He died, buried, and he resurrected. This is not our salvation. Yahweh is our salvation, which is, is Joshua. Joshua came and he did the work. But after Pentecost, when he gave the spirit unto the apostles, they had work to do. They had to go out. It's not like work like these, like this is your work, like baptism, circumcision. No, Yahweh requires them to go out. And he said, preach unto the four corners of the earth. You have to go out and tell people about the name of Yahweh. You have to testify about that name. You can't just sit down and, and you know this name. It's a big responsibility. So Yahweh requires that of us. And he said he would not hold us guiltless. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It's a big responsibility. And, I'm, and Yahweh is showing me that he, he is bringing me down to this understanding that this is not a game. Like she said, it's not a joke. We have to come to that understanding. We have to come to the reality of this thing. It's not like how we how we were out there in the world where, oh, it doesn't matter what we call him. No, it's a big thing. Yahweh's name is a is a big deal. Yep. 
That's the whole purpose of, of him, just like he said in the scriptures in Rome, with Pharaoh, he said, for this cause have I raised thee up. Right. Just, to, just to clarify his name throughout all the world. Declare his name. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal. Do I have anything holding? Yeah, finishing up. Finish, yeah, finishing up. And 25. Mm -hmm. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We know not what we should pray for. Yahweh knows what we need. He already knows. But it's, it's not like, like how we were praying before. Oh, I need, Yahweh knows you need a car. Yahweh knows you, have, you, know, you, you need shoes or you need something to eat. He already knows that. But praying for physical things is not, that's not your salvation. In the scriptures, I think he what he told uh, was it Solomon or David that he he asked not for physical things. Solomon, Solomon. Yeah. he asked right. for wisdom. Right. He asked for knowledge. Yeah. So not only did Yahweh bless him with that, he gave him even more. Yeah. It's the things of the spirit yeah. that we are trying to come down here and receive these spiritual things, not this physical. Things that we have down here on this earth that is going to perish. It means nothing to us. This is what we come down here to receive those spiritual gifts. Keep reading. Um, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And Yahshua is our intercessor. We, we, we understand that it's only through Yahshua the Messiah. He is our intercessor. Keep going. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the sons according to the will of Yahweh. You can't hide nothing from Yahweh. <laughs> you can't hide nothing from Yahweh. You understand? Whatever you think you're getting away with, you, you won't. You're not. So you might as well come to the truth and come to reality of it. Within You can't lie to yourself, first of all. You can try to, but you can't. We have to be truthful to ourselves first. And, and those infirmities that we have, Yahshua, take it with Yahshua, and Yahshua will take care of that. He will take care of those things. Does I have anything there? That's it. Get for me, um, get for me, um, there's a couple things that has been on my mind. Get for me Mark 8 and 36. Try not to be all over the place here. Mark Here's a couple of strip scriptures that's yeah. just been standing out. Mm -hmm. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Like <laughs> what Cynthia was talking about. It's not about us getting all these physical things is is what what is what does it profit us these things are going to perish what is going to profit us to gain all of this stuff and lose our soul we come down here at the end of this age and i was scared for a long time because i was like why do i even want to go to school why do i even have to go to school this world is going to end anyways <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's scary. It's like, why should I even have to try to, you know, get a job and get a career and try to do all these things? Because I feel like in my heart, it's like it does, it's not going to mean anything. This, th I feel like this world is, is going out like Yahweh. We are really at the end. Mm -hmm. But I do understand that we do still need physical things. We, st we do still have to work. We do still have to pay bills. Mm -hmm. But it's not about like how it was before, how we will go out and try to achieve all of these physical things. It's not about that. Gaining that is not your salvation. Right. You can gain all of that. Look at the billionaire. Mm -hmm. He just committed suicide. Right. Mm -hmm. This was a billionaire who had all the riches and all everything you can ask for. But he committed suicide because that state of mind that he was in. So you can gain all of that physical you know, mm -hmm. things and still lose your soul. Mm -hmm. 
It, it's, it's not, that's not how it is. That's not how it's supposed to be. Get for me Ephesians 4 and start at 1. Ephesians 4 and 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. First of all, when we come down here, I come to the understanding that if Yahweh wants you to be here, you're going to be here. Yeah, right. And you have no other choice but to sit your butt down in these seats <laughs> and listen to what Yahweh has to say. And it's not us that's doing the speaking. It's Joshua that's doing the speaking. So he says that he beseech you. That means he's begging you. Keep going. So start over. I, therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh. This is Paul speaking. He says he's a prisoner of Yahweh. Beseech you that ye walk worthy. Of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Beg you that you walk worthy of the vocation that you are called. This is a, a big responsibility. Like I say, we have to walk worthy of this. Yahweh is giving this to us, but we need to be, we need to walk worthy. We need to act like Yahweh has given this to us. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not talking about putting on the show. I'm talking about in our daily lives, every day, we have to declare his name. Because everybody is looking at us. Even on when I put stuff on Facebook, I don't know if people watching or not, but people come up to me and say, I, I read your per your post. I seen it. W what is that? What class you go to? What school you go to? I'm not thinking that so many people. I'm thinking they don't care. They're not, you know, yeah. but they pay attention yeah, to they it. Do. They, do. Mm -hmm. they pay a lot of attention. Even people on YouTube, people are listening to this. Mm -hmm. It's a big responsibility. Yep. Keep going. With all lowliness, and meekness with, with lowliness and meekness so it's it's not like you i'm sorry for no. cutting you off but it's not like you gaining knowledge out there and, and walking up like your chest puffed out yes. no it's it's a humbling thing to know the creator of the universe it's something to be humbled about with lowliness and meekness keep going with long suffering with long suffering that is the hardest thing yeah. <laughs> in this class it's just long suffering and we really don't fully understand that we're going to go through trials we're going to go through so much it's not like oh we know the creator's name and then everything is going to be all happy it's going to get worse <laughs> it's going to get worse because satan has that dart on you he has he just got that bull's eye on you and it's going to get it's like how much more <laughs> why <laughs> i'm tired of this <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. For bearing one another in love. For bearing one another in love. That's a big one. Like what Cynthia was saying, you know, it's that's a hard one because sometimes out there in the world, somebody do something to you, you want to cuss them out. You know? <laughs> you want to say something to them, but we have to understand that Satan has his his heart set on us. So we have to learn how to forgive one another. They want to, you might be having a bad day. You might, I don't know, hit your toe on something when you woke up this morning and <laughs> it just set your whole day off. But if we're brethren in the class, we have to learn that, okay, maybe she's having a bad day. You know what I mean? She Maybe Yahweh hasn't shown her that, shown something that he has shown you. Keep going. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Mm-hmm. In the bond of peace and the unity of spirit, unity in spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that which one? That what um which one is that? What number is that? Three. Three. Keep going. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Mm -hmm. One Elohim, one faith, one baptism. One Yahweh and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. See, Yahweh is above y'all all and through all and in us all. And there is one one faith, one baptism, so we can't be separated. He's talking about the unity of the Spirit. Right. And that's that oneness that just that tabernacle pattern is, is one, is not separated. Everything goes together, and that's even the body. The assembly of Yahweh. We're going to be together. We're going to be one. So there's no separation. There's no 
disputing like it is in the world, going back and forth with each other. No. That's what they did. That's what we used to, well, I can say for myself. That's what they did back here mm -hmm. in Egypt. When you come out, you come out with great substance. You are one with that spirit of Yahweh. Is that, that's it right there? Do you have anything? Get for me um, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh. When we come down here, we have to have our feet planted mm -hmm. in this gospel. And we have to be, read that again. I'm sorry. Therefore, my Therefore, beloved brethren. And my, he's always saying, I'm sorry. He's mm -hmm. always saying, I beseech you or, mm -hmm. um, Beloved brethren, you know, he's he's crying out right. to these classes, to these assemblies here, telling them something that needs to be said. Therefore, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. And he's saying it for a reason, mm -hmm. because he knows that mystery of iniquity, you know, he's going to come. And he's going to try to, he's subtle, so he's going to try to throw those things in our minds that don't need to be there. But is we have to call on Yahshua we have to call on Yahshua I don't wanna, right here to, to get rid of those. Like she said, he will let that curtain up just a little bit, but it'll come back down, and he'll let it up a little bit again. So that's the test and trial to see if we're going to run when tribulations come or we're going to be steadfast and stand, have our feet planted firm in this gospel. We're not going to come out without any, I mean, we might come out with the little bruises, little black eye here and there. You know what I mean? But we're going to survive. We, we, we're going to make it out. Keep going. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Yahweh. Always abounding in the work of Yahweh. And um, when we left the uh, unity in Yah and the, the whole, the title of it was, um, lay down, lay down. laying down your life for the brethren, and it's, and back then they did lay down their life. They physically did, and they they died, and you know they were persecuted for laying down their life. But like they say, it's not just about us physically, you know, getting beat up, laying down our life. It's coming down here to class. It's sitting in the seats. It's um, learning is listening is doing the moderation is reading the scriptures. You know, if, if one of them is sick, somebody coming, you know, seeing what each other need, being there for each other, holding each other arms up, speaking the truth. That's laying down your life for the brethren. That's being steadfast in the gospel. And that's what Dr. Kenny said. You, you know, when you pass from life to death is when you, what, when you love the brethren, Dr. Huh? Death to life. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like the death. I'm sorry. <laughs> death to life is when you love the brethren. Is there anything there? Any, any more there? Well, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in him. Our labor will not be in vain in him. Get me Hebrews the 12, 12 and 11. I believe, because when we labor, we're not laboring without any any uh, witnesses or anything that we can go on. You know, he's given us something. He's given us more than enough so that we'll be able to labor and, and to be steadfast in this gospel. Hebrews 12 and 11. Now, no chastening. For the present seems to be that's, joyous. That's not it. I want it where um, you're talking about faith. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11. 11 yeah. yeah. 11 and 6. But, but without faith. 11, 11. Yeah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. 
Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. And we know that he, he had faith because Yahweh gave him the witnesses. Yahweh, Yahweh, he knew that Yahweh was going to read that, read that again. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yahweh testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Get, get for me where it says um, it is impossible to please, well. Uh, six. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So how can we diligently seek Yahweh? How can, how, how can we diligently seek Yahweh? And you can't just say, oh, I want to know the Father, I want to know the truth, and you don't try to find out the truth. You don't try to come, you know, and learn. It's like, okay, we'll come down to class. It's like, oh, I got something to do. Mm -hmm. Like she said, have, you know, having those physical things getting in our way of our eternal soul. Mm -hmm. You have to diligently seek Yahweh, and he'll give it to you mm -hmm. if you want it. Yep. He knows what's in our heart and minds. So we have to diligently seek Yahweh for those things that we lack or those, you know, the truth, and he will give it to us. Um, get for me, so, oh my goodness, get for me Proverbs 19 and 4, well, 19 and start at 1. Proverbs 19 and 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. So we know <laughs> there's a lot of fools out there. <laughs> we know, um, keep going. <laughs> also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that ha hasteneth, hasteth with his feet sinneth. The foolishness of man perverteth his way. The and foolishness of man perverted his way. We know that out, out there is nothing but foolishness. And, and they can't see the truth. They can't see these principles, anything that is of Yahweh, because it's foolishness. And it's, and it's I want to say, it's against Yahweh. It's opposite of mm -hmm. Yahweh, as I want to say. Keep going. And his heart fretteth against Yahweh. Mm -hmm. His heart fretteth against mm -hmm. Yahweh. Wealth maketh many friends. Well, that was a big one right there. Mm -hmm. oh, that was yeah. a big one right there mm -hmm. for me. Wealth maketh many friends. Yeah. So when you out there and you're popular and you got everything going on, you got everybody around mm -hmm. you because everybody want to, you know, taste of you, want to see what you have going on. But let you lose your job. Job. <laughs> Joe, that's one of my favorite. Okay, she's going to come down here. <laughs> Joe, Joe 12. lost, when he had everything, everybody was around him. When he lost everything, what happened? They were blaming him. They told him to curse Yahweh. I don't want to get that because it's... it's so much in there. <laughs> but, um. Wealth maketh many friends. Mm-hmm. But the poor is separated from his neighbor. The poor is separated from his neighbor. And we see that. Sorry. <laughs> we see that all the time when we see um, someone on the side, you know, a road or anybody that's poor, we'll see they are not. They don't have many friends. Mm -hmm. Keep going. A false witness shall not be unpunished. Mm -hmm. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Keep going. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. Mm -hmm. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. But let you stop giving those gifts. Mm -hmm. 
let you stop coming around, you know, your family and and celebrating Christmas, mm -hmm. taking partaking in, in Easter. Mm -hmm. Let you stop doing those things. You're going to be separated. They, they're not going to want to deal with you anymore. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? Do, do people t say that you, you're different or you're strange mm -hmm. since coming into this class? Mm -hmm. It's no different. Keep going. He pursueth them with words, yet they are wanting to him. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. Mm -hmm. Keep going. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. We know that, <laughs> oh my goodness, these attributes right here is, is, first of all, this is what created the whole universe of these attributes. It's not, okay, it can't be nothing physical without this spiritual thing first, without Yahweh, Elohim coming into shape and form and then creating the physical. So if he created all of this physical and you have all this physical, what is it? It is Yahweh. So who are you going to give the glory to? Yeah. Yahweh. It's not that, oh, look what I've obtained. I've, I've got all these riches and all these, you know, stuff that is going to perish. You have to give the glory unto Yahweh. You have to give it unto the source. He is the source. He is the substance. He is the limits and bounds of everything. That's why we have him drawing on this chart. Everything in the chart is within Yahweh. Nothing escapes Yahweh. He is all in all, and he is all, <laughs> period. <laughs> so you're going to give the glory. What are you going to do? You're going to worship this physical thing? You're going to worship something physical that came from him, came from something spiritual from the get-go? No. You're going to give the glory unto Yahweh. He the one that created everything. So if you have that car, if you have that job or whatever, you need to give the glory unto Yahweh. You need to praise and worship him. And I don't know, I didn't have nothing on my own know why Yahweh have me to say these things, but he, Yahweh is showing me that don't let your soul be damned for eternity, for something that's temporary, for something that is going to die and, and, and not last. This is your eternal soul. So worship the one who created you. Don't worship the creature. Worship the creator, which is Yahweh. That's the whole purpose of us coming down here to this, this round trip. He, we came out of pure spirit. He created the Yahweh Elm. He created the whole creation. Then he brought us down here into the earth plane to worship him and to know him. And what we, what we learn while we're here in this earth plane, we have to go right back up to Yahweh, to pure spirit. So we're not going to be lacking anything. We're already going to know our creator. We're not going to be like, oh, we're going to wait till we die to find out. No, it's going to be too late. Yahweh is giving us opportunity right now to know him as he really is and actually exists. And we need not to take this for granted. We need to diligently, and I'm talking about myself too, because sometimes I lack. I don't keep my fingers in the book all the time like how I'm supposed to. And I know because Yahweh put it in my head. All right, get your finger in the books. Get off of Facebook. Stay off of Instagram. <laughs> but it's just a big distraction. And the thing is, the thing about it is, Yahweh has given Satan that power to, to distract and, and to be a big distraction. The thing about it is, we can see it in the earth plane because right now, it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. People are fighting over a chicken sandwich. A Popeye's chicken sandwich. Seriously. Really. All over the United States, they are fighting over chicken sandwich. That's how, that's how this strike, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds funny, but it's serious. It's not funny. This is what, say, what is, uh, the NFL, what Trump said, is not, I want to bring up the politician, nothing like that, but Satan has put all these things in front of us to distract us and to take our mind off of Yahweh. It has nothing to do with your eternal soul. So Yahweh still 
putting that in your head, keep your finger in the book. No matter what's going on with the world, the world's going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He gave Satan that power mm -hmm. to do that. But it's up. But to us, when we have Yahshua in us, we don't worry about those things. We don't worry about what's going on in, in Popeyes versus Chick-fil-A. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It doesn't make no sense. But Yahweh has given us enough to sustain us and to have our feet planted in this gospel and to save our souls. So we are, we are without excuse. Romans 1, 19 and 20. Let's get that. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. And he was already there. <laughs> is manifest in them. Is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. He's shown us all these things. Physically so. I mean, we can't understand spirit. We know that. So he gave us, every, we, he gave us the physical to understand the spiritual. And even not just the righteous side. The mystery of iniquity also. Right. It's not just the good. He gave us both sides so we can understand something about them. Right. Keep going. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So we can understand what uh, uh, a state of mind, what we can understand what heaven, a little bit, what heaven is about, uh, like. Mm -hmm. Because he's given us physical things of that. But we can also understand what hell is like mm -hmm. because of the state of mind of, of men and, and the state and condition that the earth plane is in right now. Mm -hmm. Look at what's going on at the Amazon. Yeah. It's burning. They call that the lungs. This is, the what they say, the lungs, the lungs. Yeah. of the earth. Yeah. Right. And it's burning. Yeah. And, and do they care? No, they don't. Because you know why? The same thing what I've been talking about. They want money. It's all about money. It's always about money. They don't care about the earth plane. They just care about getting their pockets fat. So they burn the lungs of the earth just to get their pockets fat. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. We are without excuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yahweh will. We are, we are guiltless. If we, we don't, we can't say we don't know. And even it'll say, uh. What about the people that can't read or don't know the, uh, the name of Yahweh? Well, the whole creation still is testifying to Yahweh over and over again. The sun, well, the sun, you know, it sets, it resurrects, it do it all, all over again. We eat the same time of day. Everything testifies unto Yahweh. So even... If they don't know, you always going to take care of that. But we are without excuse of not knowing him and not testifying to him and not declaring his name because he has given us enough to know and for us to be saved. So the only thing I can, I can say, brethren, is we still we have to be diligent in knowing him and trying to seek him to I can't say to the best of our abilities we can because we know that Yahshua is going to put that in us to try to, to seek him. And he knows what's in our hearts. He knows that. So if we lack of anything, ask Yahshua and he will give us that. He will give you what you need. But you have to diligently seek him and be sincere about it. Because like she said, it's not a game. It's not about us coming down here trying to, you know, boast ourselves up in anything because... Just a matter like that, we can be out of here. Or we can walk out the door and not be able to come in. That's how serious it is. So just let's keep our eyes on Yahshua and let's keep our fingers in the book. And let's keep supporting each other and loving each other and, and, and just trying to hold on because it's a mess out there. And Satan is so subtle. He creeps in like, you just like, wow. <laughs> you know, where did that come from? That's how subtle he is. Mm -hmm. Just like he deceived Eve, you know, we're not, we're not, how can I say this? Don't think you can't be deceived mm -hmm. because you still, because you in right. class. Right. He wanted to deceive you even more <laughs> because you're in class. Mm -hmm. So just, let's just be mindful of that and let's just 
like I said, just keep our eyes on Yahshua and just give him the glory and continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. And with that, I'm going to yield the floor. <laughs> Terry, stop. <laughs> all right, all right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Our uh, next speaker for uh, class will be the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joe Turner. Thank you. I wasn't planning to get up. Um, I have uh, blood sugar issues. Not diabetes, the opposite. And sometimes I just feel weak. But um, I wanted to get up because... Um, you know, Yahshua's had this, something on my heart and mind all week long, actually for weeks. And uh, it's, it's, it's basic. It's, it's nothing you probably don't know. But we come to class, you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, I, I really love soul music. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on my Pandora, mm -hmm. I listen to soul music. I've heard these songs a thousand times, you know, and but yet I still enjoy it every time I hear them, especially, you know, um, uh, I like love songs, okay, you know, that they, they just make you feel good, you know, and this to me is a love song. And, you know, you get contrast too, I got, I got to throw this out. So the lease ran out on my um, car, and which I was fine with because when I did the contract, they said, well, the buyout was this amount, which was a really good price, you know, for a three-year-old vehicle. And I walk in there, and car dealerships are a really good manifestation of the mystery of iniquity. Because <laughs> you walk in there, they're your best friend, right? And they, they want to help you out, uh, you know, Anthony, they want to help you. They want to help you. They want to help you out of your money. And they go, oh, yeah, that's the least buyout price. Well, then you have the dealer fee. And that was $1,100. And, and, and I said, no, this is the buyout price. This is what I want. So they came back and they said, okay, all right, you know, and they, you know, because they, they, I we, I was ready to just walk, all right? So I get all done, um, and I talk to the finance person, and they say, oh, yeah, this financing is really good. We'll throw in a three-year bumper-to-bumper warranty on it. And, and we'll give you gap insurance. So, like, if something happened to the car and your insurance didn't cover the whole thing, they'd, they'd pay the gap. So I get home, and I look at the contract, well, they tacked on $3,000 for those things. And they told me they were going to be thrown in. Lion sack of you know what. So we marched in there the next day and demanded that they take that off. You know, just lying and sneaking around. And it's just, it's just, a, it's just an example, though, you see. Because what's going out, on out here in these churches... They are lying to people. They're helping them out of their, their, out of their money, too. Mm -hmm. But they're also taking their souls. Yes. And, and, you know, when Dr. Kinley said you haven't had a right thought in your life true. concerning your creator, it's true. Yes. There is not one thing they teach in Christianity that is true. It's all a lie. Every single bit of it. From water baptism, you see, to Lord's suppers, to Ten Commandments. They teach you to keep the Ten Commandments. You see? That'd be like me saying to Anthony here, um, you know, I signed this contract for, for the card. You can pay for it now, right? No. No, see, the contract was with me, not with him. Right. This contract was given to Israel. And, and not to us 
Gentiles, which I think everybody in this room is probably a Gentile. All right, a non-Jew. You see, and, 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 and you know, the thing, the one thing, see, they don't understand the purpose and plan of Yahweh. See, because you got purpose, see, you got the pattern, you got the plan of salvation. All right? And whenever you think about the gospel, you should think about it in terms of the purpose of Yahweh. Okay? That, you know, for example, if you're thinking about evolution, all right, you have to think about evolution in, t in terms of the purpose of Yahweh. Now, the purpose of Yahweh is explained in this tabernacle pattern. Everything goes according to this tabernacle pattern. All right? Now, uh, Carl Emler brought this out in a lecture, and he was talking about how that from a natural standpoint, there is circumstantial, and he used that word circumstantial. You've heard that word circumstantial, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody goes to court, okay, they're being accused, let's say they're being accused of, of a crime, all right? And they'll, but they don't have, it's hard to this day and age not to, but they don't have a video of the guy killing somebody or stealing something, okay? Now they, but they can put the person in the place and they had the crime going on and they ha so they have, they can convict somebody sometimes, and they do this probably a lot of the time, on circumstantial evidence. Now there is circumstantial evidence for evolution. You dig in the ground and what do you find? You find fossils of things that don't exist anymore. Now the founder said that there was a whole lot more creatures created on this creation than exist now. And your scientists say that now. As a matter of fact, because of this environmental thing, you see with the global warming, there are one million species of animals that are now endangered of disappearing off the planet. Not to mention us. You see, we're, we're, the way we're, I, you know, I, I, I feel like I wish they'd send the troops in mm -hmm. to Brazil mm -hmm. and stop these greedy people. And, and, the, and, and you know, we think we got, got a, 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 let me be kind, an unusual president. <laughs> the one they got in Brazil is 10 times worse. And he's saying, guess what? He, he, he's from the same notebook. He's saying, oh, it's fake news. Oh, it's, it's a conspiracy. No, it's the greedy ranchers filling his pockets. There hasn't been a government in, in Brazil that ha hasn't been corrupt that I've ever known of. And I know people from Brazil, and they'll tell you that exact thing. Let's see, but, but see, the thing is, 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 oh, yeah, I read about the Chick-fil-A thing, too. See, the Chick-fil-A <laughs> people don't like, they don't like gay people. LGB, right. They're Christian. Q, right. yeah, they're Christian. That's why you can you can drive over the Chick Fil A, but they're not they're not uh, handing out chicken sandwiches today because to them it's the Sabbath. And I pulled up to a Chick Fil A on a Sunday and was pissed because I couldn't get a chicken sandwich. <laughs> they do make a good chicken sandwich. Okay, <laughs> you just can't help that. And I'm hoping Popeyes will be just as good. <laughs> but you see, all these people want to get behind this yeah. stuff, so they're buying their chicken sandwiches from Popeyes, and Popeyes ran out. Mm -hmm. and, and then they have chicken sandwich riots. Yeah. <laughs> these people are mad because they can't get a chicken sandwich. But you see, this world is just a mess. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. And, and, and for them to be... The, 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 the fires in Amazon now are worse than they've ever been. And last year they broke all the records. This year they're breaking the records by tenfold because there's no restrictions anymore. You see, this world, folks, has is, is not got very long. Now, let me get back to the circumstantial evidence. You can convict someone on circumstantial evidence, all right? 
evolution, I can see why they believe it. Because there is, they say, the fossil record. You see, and they, they make certain assumptions, but there is circumstantial evidence for it. But the purpose of Yahweh, you see, is showing that everything is made and what? And operates according to this pattern. All right? Now, if everything is made and operates according to this pattern, Okay, out here in Christianity, they tell you they'll have their revivals and they'll have everybody come on down and choose Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, our experiences is nothing they have ever taught in Christianity is right. They, they have the wrong name. They're dunking people in water. They're, they're doing circumcisions. They're doing ceremonies. Everything they're doing is wrong. Every thought they have concerning their creator is wrong. And we wouldn't have a right thought either except for Yahshua the Messiah. So according to the purpose and plan of Yahweh, you can't choose him. You cannot choose him. You see, your life is operating according to a pattern. The next step you take, well, I chose to make that step. No, you're operating according to a pattern. Mm -hmm. Now, either there's a pattern and plan of salvation of which we've seen significant evidence of, okay, or there's not. You can't have it both ways. You see, now, I'm not talking about predestination. I'm talking about everything is operating according to the purpose and plan and pattern of Yahweh. That's it. Okay? My, my wishes and desires, okay, my thoughts about things have to go according to this pattern. See? The children of Israel, when they came up out of Egypt, went through those, the, the divided waters of the Red Sea, dwelt here in the wilderness, and then 40 years later went on into Canaan's land. Did they understand that this was a court roundabout? No. Did they understand this was a holy place? No. Did they understand they were in the most holy place? No. Did they have any idea whatsoever, except for maybe Moses and Joshua, of course, did any of them have an inkling of an idea that their lives, that their steps, as it says in the scriptures, every step of a man is ordered. Who's it ordered by? Yahweh. Yahweh. That every step that they made from Egypt to Canaan's land went according to this pattern and they had no idea of it. Now the founder of this institute, and, I've, and this is in transcripts and I can find it for you. He was able to to predict all the events that are going on in the creation. And he did this on a regular basis. He'd say, this is going to happen. He's up on the floor one time, and he, and he said, Cardinal Stritch just took his last breath. Now, how would he know that? Did he have a crystal ball? Was he psychic? No. He said... He could predict it according to the pattern. He could predict all the events according to the pattern. I wish I had that profound of an understanding of this Me pattern. Too. But it'd be dangerous if I had it. <laughs> See, a little investment here, a little investment there. I'd share it with all you guys, right? <laughs> Get us a big building, have catered lunches after class. <laughs> I've had all these thoughts. <laughs> I remember Bob Muck was this, he he would say that. He'd say, Oh, I wish Yahweh would give me a million dollars. I'd buy the best classroom ever for people. You know? Of course in 
You know, it just, it just doesn't work out that way. And the fact of the matter is we are rich beyond measure. See, but it's just, it's, it's, not, it's not in physical coinage, all right? We are rich as far as the understanding that we have concerning Yahweh. Now these evolution people, they don't understand the purpose and plan of Yahweh. All right? Now, now uh, uh, you take a Tyrannosaurus Rex, okay? Everybody likes a T-Rex, right? Okay? It has a head cavity. It has a chest cavity. It has an abdominal cavity. Okay? It is made according to this pattern. You take a triceratops, okay, in its most holy place, it had a three-in-one configuration. It, had, it also went according to the pattern. Now, Darwin, did you know that Darwin, I don't know about towards the end of his life, but when he came up with the ideas of what he called similarity of the species, okay, I think it was tagged as evolution later on by other people, he was a very religious, devout man. He, all he did was he, he uh, was on a ship called the Beagle, and the Beagle went to the Galapagos Islands, which at that time were pristine. And he found all these animals that didn't exist anywhere else. And he noticed that they all were similar, and so that there was similarity of the species. So men took that idea and came up with evolution. Okay? That's what they did. Not understanding the purpose and pattern and plan of Yahweh. That all things are made according to this tabernacle. Therefore, if everything is made according to this tabernacle, you see, that's why there's similarity to the species. Because Yahweh made it that way. And people might find that as being an unsatisfactory answer to evolution, but that's, that's as good as you're going to get. You see, you, well, no, I, I don't want to say that. You know, see, Yahweh can reveal other things, and things can be discovered. But for right now, seeing that everything operates according to the pattern, the pattern of Yahweh, you see, that answers evolution. All right? Now, if... If everything is operating according to the plan of Yahweh, take that, take that idea and apply it to you personally. You come up with an idea, and you think it's your idea because it came up in your head. All right? Who put that thought in there? You see? You have a purpose of Yahweh where you have two mysteries in operation. And I'm not talking about the salesman in the car dealership anymore. They're nothing compared to this one. You have a mystery of iniquity operating. And Yahweh made him bad to be good. That's right. Or I think he also said he made him good to be bad. That's right. You see, he made him on purpose. And we've talked about this, how that in your human body you have a parasympathetic and a sympathetic nervous system. And these two work in operation. And without them working in operation, you have no health. You will die. You have your bones. You have things that break down your bones, and you have things that remake your bones. Okay? And that without this, your, your skeleton would eventually crumble and disintegrate. It has to be constantly renewed. And this, doesn't it say in the scriptures that we are renewed in the spirit? And isn't that skeleton, you see? A man within a man or a type of that soul. Okay. Now, so we know everything goes according to the pattern. So that right there takes away free will. Now the words free will do appear in the Bible. But where they appear, it's, it talks about how that Israel will give a free will offer, uh, offering. It doesn't say the words free will in terms of you have a choice. Now here's the thing. We have the illusion of choice. 
All right? But what you choose has already been preordained. Now, there's a show um, on NPR, and it's on the weekends. It's, I think it's called The Hidden Brain. Uh, the, yeah, some psychologist, Shaka Radakton or something like that. I, I don't know. On Saturdays. On Saturdays. And they were talking about how that um, many psychiatrists are totally opposed to capital punishment. Now, why would psychologists care about that? Because from a psychological standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Because what they say is, you see, and what is assumed is this, that the person, let, let's say, let's say Nancy, uh, just, I just rub her the wrong way, so she just <laughs> comes up behind me and knifes me, okay? okay? I have to be extreme with these examples. I want to keep your attention, okay? Now, they would arrest Nancy, okay? They get the fingerprints off the knife and stuff like that, you see. And, and the, 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 the argument that the prosecuting attorney would basically either say or that's implied is, is that she had a choice about that. They say, because people will say, well, if I was Nancy, I wouldn't have done that. Well, the fact of the matter is, if you were Nancy, you would have done the exact same thing. Because the psychiatrists and psychologists realize that people from a natural standpoint are formed by two things, their genetics and their, uh, uh, their background, their environment. That's, another, that's a good word, okay? By their experience, all right? Um, now, this can go both positive and negative. All right, but what they realize is that a lot of these people that are committed, uh, that commit these terrible crimes, okay, there are reasons for, for the most part, there are reasons for these things to occur. These people either were brutalized as a child, um, uh, gr grew up in a violent environment, um, they maybe. Uh, from a, uh, a genetic standpoint, you see, uh, uh, th they did not have uh, the, 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 the psychological makeup to control their urges. There are children who have no ability to control every urge that pops into their head, and they can't help it. I forget the name of the condition. Obsessive compulsive disease. Obsessive -compulsive disease. Thank you. You see? Now, if that's true from a natural standpoint, Okay. Now, the same thing works, you see, like I said, that can work from a positive standpoint. Okay, that, that people do good things based on their genetics and their environment. Okay. That these things are, to, to, to a large degree, hardwired into a person. All right. Now, if from a natural standpoint there's an argument for you have no choice for what you do, Okay, and what you say from a spiritual standpoint, you see, and really from the reality, from the purpose standpoint, the pattern and plan, this is all working with unerring accuracy. Am I going to break this pattern? You see, when I came into class. Okay, and we read this, I think it was in, the, in, in either the scripture reading or w one of the scriptures that was gotten. Paul talks about being a prisoner mm -hmm. of Yahweh. Where was that? In Ephesians? You got it. Four, I think it was Ephesians 1 and 4 and 1. Oh, thank you. Ephesians 4 and 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of Yahweh, beseech you. Now, now, when you're a prisoner, is it, it, do democratic principles govern your, uh, no. No, you're told when to get up, when to eat, 
when to shower, when to do whatever. You have no control over your life. See, that's the whole idea, is they put you in a situation where you are controlled. You are, and, and, and look at, that is horrible for us as far as, you know, from a natural standpoint. You see, you have no freedom. You can't go get a drink or have, you know, or, or, or you see, you are incarcerated. You are confined. You see, people don't like that. Now, I wouldn't like it either. Okay, I actually experienced some of that as a young man. Okay, I got into trouble. And they put me in the pokey for a while. Okay, and it, it, it was not a nice place. You know. Now, so from a spiritual standpoint, though, it's a wonderful thing to be imprisoned by Yahweh. You talk about it. You see, people have these, these uh, sayings, a gilded cage. Okay? He takes care of everything. You see, we shouldn't have to worry about a thing. You see, that Yahweh is going to, he's going to, I've never gone hungry. I've never not had a place to live. And I've told you guys my story, how that when I was 18 years old, my dad got in his car and he left town. And the people in class got me an apartment. Dave Willekit made me a water bed. Chuck and Jennifer fed me until I got a job. And, and then they kept feeding me, but then they wanted some money for it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, for Jennifer's cooking, it was a deal. She's a good cook. Okay. But you see, it's, it's like Yahshua provided this family for me. And we are more family. I mean, I can tell you things that there's no way I could tell, well, other than Jennifer, any of my, my, my sisters or my brother. I've tried to tell them about class. And I hope maybe someday that they'll change their mind. You know, my sister Julie came here and, that, that time and she seems to enjoy class but that's a that's one thing another thing is to have Yahweh open it up to you then you just you, you get the I can't help it okay now I want to get something here. all right now this is let's see if I can find it this is out of the Panoramic Vision pamphlet. I had it, but it moved. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is a pretty remarkable um, where he describes basically what he went through. Because, you see, Dr. Kinley was taken back up to the same place up in this cloud and saw the same, same vision that, that Moses saw. And, and Dr. Kinley said that his vision was so stupendous that it would encapsulate both the visions that John had and the vision that Moses had. That's, that's what he saw. Okay. Now, he also saw these things after Pentecost, too. Okay, now John saw it after Pentecost, but, but you see what I'm saying, that he had this stupendous vision in Revelation. Okay. Uh, it's okay. Okay, he talks about the pattern a lot. Um, well, I'm going to have to quote it. But he's talking about how that Yahweh made everything. And even down to the meanderings right. of a man's, of a man's mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, five minutes from now, you're going to have some meanderings, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be thinking about stuff. Do you even know what you're going to be thinking about five minutes from now? 
Yahweh knew what you were going to be thinking about back in the realm of eternity. Okay. What you're going to be thinking about now. That's something. Mm -hmm. I mean, people talk about supercomputers. They're stupid compared to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. See, they have no ability to predict anything. See, and yet he created this whole creation and everything in it and even the thoughts that a man would have. Now, now please read this. this I'm, I'm not taking it out of context, but read this, uh, uh, this uh, pamphlet and it, it, it'll uh, explain a lot as far as that is concerned. But you see, Yahweh has some power. Now, um, Okay. Okay, would you get for me? <laughs> I have here Ephesians, the first and second chapter. Okay. <laughs> but let's go, actually, let's go to the scripture reading. And um, now, so I'm just, so far, all I've talked about was that there, there's a pattern. Okay. Now, predestination is something that is operating according to the pattern, but it has a, a different meaning to it. Now, if you look at, and these terms are used pretty much interchangeable. You have predestination, and you also have a term preordained. All right. Pre means before. So an example of predestination would be, let's say you decide um, you're going to go to Albuquerque, okay, for the, that conference. I, did that happen already, or is that no. okay? Um, the, the 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 inn is full though. Yeah. Okay, they they won't. But but let's say you. You uh, uh, thought, thought ahead, and you decide you're going to go to, to uh, Albuquerque. Now, if you had plane tickets and hotel reservations and maybe a car reservation, you could say that you are, from a natural standpoint, predestined to arrive in Albuquerque on a certain date, at a certain time, have a place to sleep, have a car to drive in, that this has been predestined. All right? Now, predestination from a spiritual standpoint refers to where your destination is. Okay? Now, your destination, there's really only two places. Okay? Your destination, you see, could be the kingdom of Yahweh, okay, in that new heaven and new earth state with an immortal glorified body. Okay, now that's what I want. Okay. Or your destination could be that lake of fire. There's two destinations. Now, the destination that you will arrive at was already predetermined, you see, back in the realm of eternity by Yahweh Elohim. That this has already been set up. Okay, hold your finger there in Romans and go over to Jeremiah, the first chapter. Okay. Um, pick it up at 1 and 4, please. Jeremiah 1 and 4. Mm-hmm. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now this is Jeremiah. And he's a pro he was a mighty prophet unto Yahweh. And Jeremiah, before, Yah before he was even yes, formed for in the belly, mm -hmm. I knew thee. He knew thee. Go ahead. And before thou camest <coughs> forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. He sanctified thee. Go ahead. And I ordained thee. A prophet unto the nations. See, all that was done before he was even born. He didn't. He didn't pull Jeremiah aside 
and say, well, you have some options here, okay? You can be uh, a, a prophet unto me or, you know, he didn't, he didn't give him any options. This was preordained, okay? And it was preordained from the foundations of the world. And we think, wow, that's so cool. Jeremiah and everything he did was preordained. Did you know he had to go out and, and preach naked? Yep. I mean, can you, can you imagine that? You see? Now, Yahweh had him do that. All right? And, and, and it, it, it was according to his purpose, you see, that that should be done. But he preordained or predestined every one that's going to be saved, okay? That has been predestined from the foundations of the world. You see, now let's go over to uh, Romans and, and pick it up at uh, 9 and... I'll pick up 9 and 10. I only have a few minutes left. Romans 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac... For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. They haven't made any choices. They haven't done anything good or evil. Go ahead. That the purpose of Yahweh, according to election... See, but you have a purpose that is unfolding. So that the purpose of Yahweh, by election... Go ahead. That the purpose... Oh, I'm sorry. That the purpose of Yahweh according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. But him, not of works. Okay? You can't work up on it. You can't be so good that Yahweh has to save you. And you can't be so bad that he's not going to save you. Not that there shouldn't be s some alterations. Okay? When you hear this gospel... And that Holy Spirit goes, you know, that, that you receive of that Holy Spirit, that you become one with Yahshua, that hopefully that's going to cause a change. You see, at least in the way you think, and eventually it's going to change, you see, the, the way that you, you act. Okay, if I can put it that way. But I hate putting uh, physical manifestations on a, on a spiritual thing. But you're at least going to love the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. You see, that's what we, that's that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. That's where you have the I can't help it. You know, when you hear something, when you hear the gospel, especially when you're out. Let's say you're out working your job, and you know, let let's say you open up one of your textbooks at the school, and there's Yahweh in it. Doesn't that make you feel good? Mm -hmm. yes. See? Or you're watching the news and you see, well, okay, we had this, this thing happen and, you know, we had some, some blood and, and there was a flood, okay? <laughs> and, and the helicopters, okay, swooped in, that's the spirit, and saved them. And there was 40 of them saved. I mean, you know... I used to keep a notebook of blood, water, spirit, 40s as far as physical events. And eventually I just got tired of doing it because they happen all the time. You know? But every time you see it, what does that tell you? Why, why, is, that, why is that important? It tells you Yahweh's real. Not that you didn't know that, but you got that reminder. And it, it, it makes... It, Sometimes, folks, it just makes me high, spiritually. I just feel like, wow, that is so cool, you know? <sighs> yeah. Anyways, so keep reading here, please. 12. And was said unto her, wait a minute, wait, first of all, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. So election. Sure, See, now an election is where somebody is chosen, right? They're elected. See, in Yahweh's purpose, we're elected, okay? But he's the only one that has a vote. I mean, it talks about that we're saved by election, okay? But he's the one who is cho choosing us. That's the election of Yahweh. 
Okay, the election of man, okay, we had an election, right? Did the people with the most votes, did the candidate with the most votes, did she win? No. See, I kept telling people at work after that, I said, we don't live in a democracy. No. <laughs> the loser became president. <laughs> so, you know, and it's no wonder, you know, that the, the people don't want to vote because they say my vote doesn't count for anything. Mm -hmm. You're right, it doesn't. <laughs> I went out and voted. I did. It was kind of a principle thing because I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get political, but. You know, it was just out of a principle that, you know, I wanted to say, hey, you know, I don't like this, you know. Now, what good did it do me? None. Wasted a perfectly good afternoon at the library in line. Not happening again. <laughs> I don't care. You see, Yahweh's purpose is going to happen no matter who is president. The Amazon forest is going to burn no matter who's president, no matter how much you like them. Now, look, I'm out of time. So, uh, and I'm, I, but, but you go through here and it talks about the potter and the clay and all these kind of stuff. That, that See, the clay is that the spirit of Yahweh and, and he is the potter. And that we are just totally and completely at the mercy of Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. And that's not a bad place to be. Okay? So thank you so much for the time. All right, that concludes our class. Is it, there any announcements? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a, a paper. If you want to come to our barbecue next Sunday, uh, if you want to bring a side, there's going to be a paper up at the front table for you to write it down. Yeah, I got that. Mm -hmm. We're, having a, we're having a Labor Day barbecue after class. Um, we're going to take care of all the burnt animal flesh. <laughs> and if anybody wants to bring sides or drinks or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that would be great. And we're going to just throw some chicken on our just a reminder also, we're at the end of the month, <clears throat> and um, our bills are due. And for all choir members, uh, we have choir rehearsal. Okay, all right. We hold classes on Sunday from 11 to 1 and on Wednesday from 7 to 9. We, may we all stand to be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jesus. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before all times, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.